I'll start it off. Um, just like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that and uh, custodians of the land that we're meeting on uh, in Australia today and um, acknowledge their elders past and present. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present today. Uh, it's an honour to represent the Pharmacy Guild of Australia. Sorry, can, I, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, did you, did you hear me before or was I muted? There was a brief period of mutation. Okay. So I'd uh, just like to um, yeah, uh, reiterate, I'm Helen O'Byrne, uh, President of Pharmacy Guild of Australia Tasmania Branch and also the Vice President of Workplace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, did you, did you hear me before or was I muted? It was a brief period. Of Hello. Okay. So, um, no, I should I'm be going. Like um, yeah. Uh, I'm Helen O'Byrne. Sorry, I'm having a few issues here. Should I? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will just be starting our session now. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody for the first webinar on the opportunities in Australia, pharmaceutical sector for Pakistani citizens. Uh, to begin the webinar, I would like to invite the High Commissioner for his opening remarks. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody from the Australia. and good afternoon to everyone who's joining us from here in Australia. But I understand we are in different time zones. Assalamu alaikum to everyone who is in Pakistan. And then I understand Infan is in the UK and Vakas Ashraf is in Saudi Arabia. So welcome everyone to uh, uh, the initiative by the High Commission for Pakistan that is called the Opportunities Conference. Pakistan and Australia has always enjoyed friendly and cooperative relations, but people to people contacts is the key in this important relationship. The purpose of organizing the Opportunity Conference is to further deepen Pakistan-Australia cooperation in different sectors, but most importantly, to also present the opportunities available here in Australia for Pakistani youth. So the first seminar of a series of seminars that we'll be organizing under the Opportunity Conference today is on the pharmaceutical the sector and the opportunities available here in Australia for Pakistani youth uh, in this sector. I am extremely grateful to uh, Pharmacy Guild of Australia, Pharmaceutical Society of Australia, but most importantly, Irfan Hashmi and Vakas Ashraf for being part of this initiative. Without their help, it would have been difficult for us to organize this webinar. So with this, I once again, welcome you all and open the uh, floor for further presentations and we'll take the discussion forward from there. Ji Aisha. So thank you very much. Our first speaker is Ms. Helen O'Brien. She's the president of Pharmacy Guild. I would like to invite her for her remarks and her presentation. Thank you very much, High Commissioner, and uh, it's an honour to be able to present to you all today. Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land that we're meeting on today and also acknowledge um, their elders past and present. Um, my name's Helen O'Byrne and I'm the President of the Pharmacy Guild of Tasmania, uh, of Australia Tasmania branch, and also the Vice President of Workplace Relations. 
The Pharmacy Guild of Australia is was an, established in 1927 and is the national peak body for pharmacy owners in Australia. Uh, so that is owners of communi uh, community pharmacies across Australia. We are run by a national council that is elected um, throughout the states ter and territories of Australia. And as well as that, we have, well, we have significant reach into all communities across, um, across our 26 million people. Uh, we also own an insurance company and a superannuation company that services uh, our industry and also other allied health industries. There are nearly 6,000 community pharmacies in Australia uh, and the Pharmacy Guild has branches in each state and territory and we are there to support our members to ensure that they can run their businesses seamlessly and uh, we also help the Guild uh, help pharmacy owners have a voice to federal, state and territory governments uh, for uh, not only themselves but their staff and patients. Uh, the location rules of pharmacy in Australia are uh, governed by the, the federal government. Uh, they require pharmacies to be loca located in certain areas and the state government also uh, rules over the ownership of pharmacies and that ensures the viability, the financial viability of community pharmacy and also underpins what we call the universal access to medication for every Australian citizen. Now I'm going to try and forward my PowerPoint and I hope it's going to work. Uh, no, it's not. Oh, yes, there we go. Um, there we are. So we have uh, two subcategories of workforce. We have the pharmacist workforce, which is around 33,000 registered pharmacists and the non-professional pharmacy workforce, which is around 30,000 people. That's pharmacy sales assistants and pharmacy technicians. 86% of non-professional pharmacy workforce are employed in community pharmacy or the retail setting, which means not in hospitals in uh, community pharmacy. There are lots of opportunities. The Pharmacy Guild is doing um, a uh, an analysis of our workforce currently, and we understand that there is a significant deficit of both um, professional pharmacist workforce and non-professional pharmacy workforce, which means that we very much welcome pharmacists coming to Australia to fill uh, that deficit. Um, Regional and remote locations are where we really need pharmacists. Our communities are screaming out uh, for the professional help of, of pharmacists uh, and they're very accepting of multicultural um, people and uh, welcome, would welcome you into their communities. It's also an excellent experience uh, for newly registered pharmacists in Australia uh, to be in a rural or regional area that can give you broad access to opportunities um, and a broader experience of working as a pharmacist. We're working towards full scope of practice in Australia. During the COVID pandemic, uh, pharmacists or community pharmacies administered 9 million vaccinations. It's a lot of vaccinations and we needed a lot of workforce um, but there are more and more things we are starting to do. Uh, there are trials in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria that are starting to prescribe antibiotics uh, for urinary tract infections. And this uh, broader scope of practice is only going to, to become uh, more widely utilised with other governments over the coming years. We need to ease pressure on our uh, doctors and our emergency departments to improve uh, patient outcomes. Being registered uh, as a pharmacist in Australia is quite a complex process uh, and I'll leave that to others to go through that process. But just wanted to let you know that the Pharmacy Guild in conjunction with the Australasian College of Pharmacy does offer uh, newly registered um, overseas pharmacists a course that helps with uh, the interface with community pharmacy. 
we do notice that even though a new, uh, newly arrived pharmacist may have passed the CAPS exams, there are some little processes uh, like understanding our legislation and also uh, understanding how community pharmacy works on the ground that um, don't come with that CAPS um, uh, information. And so the Austral Australasian College of Pharmacy offers this course that I would encourage you all to do. Um, that is available if you contact your pharmacy guild in the state or territory that you come to, we can certainly help you to organise that. Uh, it can be completed before you enter Australia even. So if you would like to contact me, I can put you into the, um, point you in the right direction. I think that's all I wanted to say. I can see that there are other pharmacists on the call that are going to give you a lot more information. Um, all I can say is we welcome you to Australia. Uh, we value the, um, the relationship we have with the Pakistan High Commission and uh, good luck with your exams. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Bryan, for such an informative and comprehensive presentation on opportunities for pharmacists uh, uh, from Pakistan in Australia. Um, I would now like to invite our next speaker, Mr. Brenton Hart. He is the chief pharmacist of Terry by Chemmart Group, which is a network of more than 600 pharmacies in Australia. Um, the floor is yours for your remarks. Thank you very much for the invitation to be here to the High Commissioner and um, thank you Helen for a great start to the session. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land in which I join you from today, the Gubby Gubby people, uh, just north of Brisbane in Queensland in Australia. So great to be here with you and to share a little bit about the Terry White Chemmart network of pharmacies here in Australia. Um, we are part of a big group, a big network of pharmacies. We're not quite at 600 yet, unfortunately. We're at about 530. Uh, pharmacies, but um, we're definitely on a strong pipeline to 600 plus. Um, so very soon we'll be able to say one in 10 pharmacies in Australia is a Terry White Chemart, which is a great achievement. But to say that um, we're actually still very grounded in our roots. And on this slide, you'll see our finders, uh, sorry, our founders, Terry and Rhonda White, who are still actively involved, not only in our brand, but still continuing to drive scope of practice and our profession forward here in Australia every day. Um, our mission at Terry White Chemart is to create a better future for Australian pharmacy. We, we really do believe that as a brand, we can inspire generations of pharmacists like yourselves and our patients to be excited to go to their local community pharmacy and understand the benefits that a community pharmacist can have on their, on their uh, over health, overall healthcare. Of course, in Australia, pharmacists are some of the most accessible and the most trusted healthcare professionals. So we're doing everything we can to fly the flag for community pharmacy. And for me, that's really about making sure that all of our teams in the pharmacies really love doing the work that they do. And that helps us deliver on our ambition, which you can see on this slide here, is to deliver actual health outcomes for every patient that walks through our doors. And with our scale, we, we do accommodate more than 2 million customers every month through our Terry White Chemmart doors. So for us, it's all about delivering on these commitments. And um, I guess for me today, it's really inviting you to learn a little bit more about Terry White Chemmart and why you may want to choose Terry White Chemmart pharmacy, I tell you what, Chemart Pharmacy, if you can, for your future career here in Australia. From a pharmacy brand point of view, um, look, I think it's really great to work in such a big network of pharmacies that I believe are, are driving our profession forward. Um, I've talked about the size and the scale of Terry White Chemart. Um, Helen mentioned before as well that there's so many regional and remote sites in Australia that are screaming out for pharmacists, and I completely agree. Um, so please do consider coming to work in Australia. You will be definitely uh, welcomed uh, by any pharmacist owner in this country and we can give you a really rewarding and um, fulfilling career as well. Um, but of course, there are other pharmacy brands in Australia, but what makes us different at Terry White Chemart? Sorry, my slide keeps moving forward. Um, for me, it's really about the work we've done. Uh, and Helen mentioned vaccinations before as well. Well, for me at Terry White Chemart, I'm really proud to say we are uh, the, the pharmacist administered vaccination of choice for, for Australians. And we actually pioneered the administration of vaccines many years ago, nearly 10 years ago. Um, and all of the hard work we did through COVID um, have really culminated in actually one in five vaccinations that happen in a community pharmacy now happen in a Terry White Chemmart. And in the last 12 months alone, we've done more than 2 million vaccinations in our clinic rooms around the country. Um, beyond that, we're committed to making pharmacists like yourselves heroes in our communities. We do that in a whole bunch of different ways. We use them in our marketing predominantly, but also we activate 
your skills and your skill set in the work that we do in our clinic rooms, not just in vaccinations, but in other health programs and services as well. Beyond that, I want to just quickly talk about our education, because I think we deliver our industry's best in market education program. And that's called Terry White Chemmark Masterclass. It's a year long education program that we offer every year. And it's not just about getting your CPD points here in Australia. It's about making you a better pharmacist. We actually provide challenging content. and We encourage you to activate your learnings in the pharmacy with your patients day to day. Uh, and that's culminated every year with a three day face to face conference uh, where you can get a whole host of CPD points. And we provide that free of charge for our members every year. Yes, free of charge. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner, our 400 plus delegates that we got together on the Gold Coast last year in Queensland as well. So these are great events and we can support you in your career. And these are great ways to meet like-minded pharmacists such as yourselves. Just quickly in terms of further training and support, especially for newly graduate and early career pharmacists here in Australia, we also have the Intern Development Program. This is a really dedicated program to provide mentorship and support to help you fully transition to a fully registered pharmacist here in Australia. Um, and really also develop your professional practice and your clinical skills as well. Um, so as part of this program, you'll gain the benefit um, of our commitment to help you with your study and support with your pharmacy board exams. Um, and of course, we understand the importance of competitive salaries and hourly rates um, to make sure your expertise is rewarded as well. We also have some really great career pathways and you know, ways that we can provide the next step in your pharmacy career, whether that's a professional services pharmacist, a pharmacy manager, right through to partnership and ownership opportunities as well. So I'd just like to finish by saying, look, the summation of all of those things I've said in my five minutes, for me really make great factors in why you should look at choosing Terry White Chemart as a great place to start your Australian pharmacy career, uh, where you can actually make a genuine difference by putting your skills to use with patients in a local community pharmacy. We'd love to have you, we'd love to get to know you better. Um, there's a QR code on the screen now. If you wanna um, pop your details in there, you can register your interest to be part of the Terry White Chemart network in the future and we'll stay in touch with you. I know later in the program we've already heard from Helen but you'll also hear from Irfan and John as well who are part of our network and they'll share their ex expertise and experiences in supporting pharmacists such as yourselves in making the transition to Australia. So uh, it's been lovely to share a bit about Terry White Chemart today and I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Thanks very much. Um, thank you so much um, and thank you so much for uh, sharing with us about the Terry White Chemart and the opportunity to work in, in the company, especially the internship program for the new graduates. Um, now I would like to invite Ms. Veronica Asida, the President of Pharmaceutical Society of Australia in the South Australia for her remarks. Thank you so much for inviting me to talk to you all. You may hear that my accent is slightly different from Helen's and Brenton's. And that is for the reason of I moved to Australia 10 years ago from the Czech Republic. And back there, I graduated from the pharmaceutical faculty as a, a master of ph pharmacy and got my degree recognized here in Australia as a bachelor of pharmacy with honors. Um, and so 10 years ago, I moved to Australia because I met um, my husband who happens to be a Czech citizen, but also Australian citizen. And we decided to move to Australia to start a better life. Um, the, when Irfan approached me to talk to you all, and I do not have presentation slides, um, he actually asked me to share a story with you as a female pharmacist um, and about my journey leading to uh, becoming a president of South Australian and Northern Territory branch of, of Pharmaceutical Society of Australia. And before I move into talking about what Pharmaceutical Society of Australia has on offer, I'd just like to share a bit, bit of my story there. So 10 years ago, I moved to Australia. And before then, I was quite involved in the International Pharmaceutical Students Federation, um, which gathers all the students from all over the world that study pharmacy. And for those students on the floor uh, who are listening today, I would just like to encourage all of you to reach out through your universities to the IPSF, which is sort of an organization that sits within the International Federation of Pharmacists and um, get to know those pharmacy students that are all over the world. Because when you move to a different country like I did 10 years ago, those were my, my true connections that I reached out for when I was registering um, as a pharmacist here. So I went through the CAPS process and the IELTS uh, English exam and um, then became registered and started or continued my journey in a community pharmacy. I did work for the banner groups that have been mentioned here today. 
but also um, I was really interested in project management and in research. So um, I am no longer a community pharmacist working in community pharmacy, but I do study my PhD at the University of Sydney, but also uh, I'm working for the local government in South Australia as an implementation coach. So the career pathways are incredible. And working in Australia, you can choose to work in a community pharmacy while you pursue your PhD, or you can choose to work in a community pharmacy as a community pharmacist with all the fantastic services that Australia has to offer uh, to the pharmacists. I'm not sure what the situation in Pakistan is, but in Czech Republic, for example, pharmacists can't vaccinate. Um, that is not an option or can't be paid for medicine reconciliation reviews. Whereas here in Australia, you can do that and you can help your patients with diabetes and, and assess their medications and get uh, get payments for that as well. So there, there are wonderful avenues that Irfan and Helen and John and, um, and others can actually talk to you about that actually differ from all the other countries um, across the world in terms of service delivery. So you don't necessarily only dispense medications, but you can also deliver services um, to the community. And it has been mentioned here that um, Australian country and regional and remote areas are in a need of the workforce. So for example, where, where John is uh, Zooming uh, from today, there is a great lack of health professionals in the country, but the communities are really small and they really welcome families and women um, in particular to join their workforces. So being a diverse woman in Australia, has led me uh, to reach out to fabulous women that moved from other countries as well. And there are a couple of Pakistani ladies that we have been catching up. And I must say that Australia is very generous when it comes to uh, being a female pharmacist or, or enabling a female or, or women to work part-time. So for those women on the call that are considering moving to Australia and becoming registered pharmacists, uh, Australia is really supportive of, of uh, you having a family and working part time. And that goes to the male uh, counterparts as well. So we are coming into the equal terms of being a female and male and taking care of the children. And you can actually swap those duties. And that is very well supported by owners um, as well. So that's a little bit about my journey. But Today, I'm talking to you from the position of the uh, South Australia and Northern Territory President of uh, Pharmaceutical Society of Australia. So if you want to go and hop on a psa.org.au website, that will provide you with some more information about what Pharmaceutical Society is. But in comparison with the Pharmacy Guild of Australia, which represents pharmacy owners and supports pharmacists in community pharmacies, Pharmaceutical Society of Australia is the only Australian government recognized peak national professional pharmacy organization that represents uh, 36,000 pharmacists working across all sectors. So here in Australia, you can work in general practice as a general practice pharmacist, you can work as a hospital pharmacist, you can work as an aged care pharmacist or a researcher or a government pharmacist. So there's a number of, and there's many more opportunities to work. Um, and we do represent all of you. So it is wonderful to collaborate with Pharmacy Guild of Australia as well on a number of initiatives, and we do work really well together. I would just like to state the vision of PSA is that every Australian has access to safe, quality and effective healthcare through optimizing the role of pharmacists in the Australian healthcare system. And I think that underpins all of our work here. So I would like to encourage all the people on the call who are undergraduate students to reach out to your International Pharmaceutical Students Federation uh, colleagues and to get involved because that will actually set you good on a pathway to understand what the healthcare system in Australia has on offer and to reach out to Irfan to hear more about um, uh, other pathways as well. If there's any questions, please feel free to pose them in a chat and I'll try to answer them um, for me, especially from, from the female counterparts as well. Back to you, Irfan, and back to you, Commissioner. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your briefing, but especially from the perspective of a woman in a leadership role. I'm sure all of um, our, all of the people who are attending today, it would be very helpful for them, especially the aspiring young pharmacists in Pakistan. 
And I think your point that pharmacists in Australia are not just providing medication, but also services is something very relevant and important. Um, I would now like to invite our next speaker, Mr. Bakas Ashraf. He's the managing partner at the EMSIL for his remarks. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. High Commissioner and all the great guests. Uh, I'll go through the process overview of registration. It would be a quick go so uh, the audience can uh, see the process of registration. There are a few areas, definitely complex, but uh, we can answer later. You can uh, ask questions. Please feel, feel free to ask the questions. Um, I'll just share the slides. <clears throat> okay, um, thank you very much again, uh, Mr. High Commissioner and uh, all the guests uh, for coming and um, doing this uh, conference of opportunities of uh, pharmaceutical sciences of Pakistani pharmacists. Um, Pakistan High Commissioner Zad Hafiz Chaudhary, he is always uh, very passionate and supportive uh, to Pakistani pharmacist, he always uh, spoke to us uh, and uh, create some um, uh, efforts and processes to support uh, Pakistani pharmacists to come uh, and uh, practice here in Australia. Um, uh, between their efforts, uh, arranging the CAPS exam uh, center in Pakistan as an international value venue, it is one of uh, uh, the big effort and success, I would say, you no know, Pakistani pharmacists, they can easily appear and uh, pass their CAPS exam in Islamabad without leaving the country. So um, there are other areas where he tried to develop academic relationship, regulatory pharmacy, uh, council relationships and other bodies in Pakistan. So he also engaged uh, the Pakistani pharmacist exchange programs and Australian universities just to make sure that uh, there should be more collaboration and there should be more movement of pharmacists between two countries. Um, so, uh, yeah, I am uh, have a quick introduction. I'm Vakas Shroff and I'm a, I'm a partner and um, I'm a director of uh, MKL and Guardian Pharmacy in Balconen. Um, so uh, we would be covering few points in these slides. Uh, what are the authorities cover? Uh, what are the authorities involved in the um, in the regulation of pharmacy profession in Australia? Uh, journey of uh, overseas pharmacists in Australia. Time and cost sometimes is a big concern. Um, different areas of practice, which uh, um, Veronica has just mentioned as well. Um, and then future outlook of pharmacist in um, uh, 2023 plan. I would say this was the PSA's plan and scope and opportunities of pharmacists in rural Australia, which Farhan Hashmi would explain very well. And I think this area is massive and uh, there, is a, there is a massive shortage of pharmacists in rural areas. Even uh, we felt it uh, in, in, in urban areas uh, during the last two years when there was a, a massive need of dem uh, massive demand of services and vaccination and all that, uh, it was very hard to find a pharmacist and it's still very hard to find a pharmacist. Um, so this is an um, overview of different authorities uh, that, which are involved in uh, registration process of overseas pharmacists. So Australian Pharmacy Council is the body which uh, helps to uh, evaluate the documents, uh, to assess the documents that uh, the, the overseas pharmacist is eligible to appear in uh, uh, any particular stream. We have stream A and stream B, and I would say Pakistani pharmacists would be in stream B and be there. Bachelor of Pharmacy or Doctor of Pharmacy, uh, both degrees are eligible in this stream. So they, uh, they conduct uh, after the evaluation exam, they would uh, be conducting um, the intern written exam. Um, and then uh, because we're talking about pharmacy, so it's a pharmacy board of Australia and the main, um, which is uh, the regulatory body of uh, pharmacy profession. So 
they take care of registration of pharmacists and students they develop standards codes ethics guidelines and they handle notifications complaints and investigations and disciplinary hearings uh, they assess overseas trained practitioners who wish to practice in australia they approve accreditation standards and accredited courses of study in australia um, so then uh, we have apra australian health practitioner regulatory agency which takes care of 15 national boards pharmacy uh, would definitely be coming under uh, apra and apra um, takes care of the pharmacist registration they work according to the pharmacy board of australia standards uh, so this is uh, another quick flow diagram to uh, to show the process uh, to make it easy to understand so uh, the first step is docu document evaluation through australian pharmacy council and um, after that if you get a eligibility outcome as positive eligibility outcome you can go for a exam which would be stream a caps exam uh, for overseas pharmacists like pakistan and uh, once you pass caps then you have to um, sit for english exam which is a requirement for uh, uh, pakistani pharmacist and uh, there are a uh, few types of english exams which you can do including ielts pt and uh, um there is another one um so these exams uh, once you pass this english exam uh, oet uh, once you pass these english exams you you get eligible to apply for provisional registration with apra so uh, you fulfill their requirements and uh, then you are ready to apply for intern positions uh nowadays um, uh, i won't go much into depth of this uh, once you pass your cap uh, um, caps exam and uh, you get assessment from uh, um australian pharmacy council you would be eligible to apply for uh, um state nomination regional nomination employer sponsorship employer nomination trainee visas there would be lots of options and with uh with demand it it may not be that hard as it used to be in the past or in other times so uh and then after that um, you complete um, 1824 standard hours and then during these hours you uh, go through um, uh, inter intern training program which is set up by um, different unis organized that pharmaceutical society of australia pharmacy guild of australia they all uh, conduct that uh, intern training program and during that you learn uh, australian pharmacy uh, practice uh, and um, uh, as well as that 1824 hours under supervision uh, it's your opportunity for one year to learn how to practice in australia um so once you finish that you do your um, written and oral exam you can apply for your general registration and then you would be pharmacist registered pharmacist it's it's a very quickest uh, way went through uh sometimes the cost is concerned so um nowadays everything is uh, online so you can submit all your documents according to the apc uh, on the website so it's around 1310 is a fee the time frame is 2 to 6 months i would say this is the old time frame within 2 months nowadays they do uh, evaluate your documents uh, documents required they very it's it's a very simple uh, requirement academic qualification evidence of registration passport and photograph that's it and uh, at the end of this uh, presentation there would be a link to apc website as well and uh, we can share this presentation if someone would need that um and then uh, once you get positive assessment from apc you have to appear for exam each attempt it's uh, 2190 australian dollars uh the two exam papers each paper consists of 100 mcqs 2 hours and uh, apc conduct these exams three times a year uh each conduct um exams are also conducted at uh, all the international venues and as a uh, uh, paid my gratitude gratitude to high commissioners that um, that also conducted in islamabad so you can do it in your own country um so in caps caps exam in 2023 so um um yeah the january one is gone so still there is an opportunity for february and june registrations would open the exams would happen in july and november so it's maximum three exams two to three exams uh, a year so as i said that uh, uh, pakistan islamabad is a venue 
for uh, exam. So uh, thanks to High Commissioner of Pakistan again. So this was an effort. It was used to be there, uh, but for 10 years, we did not have this center in Islamabad, but now it's back since 2019. Um, so this is something I've already explained that uh, once you pass the exam, you apply for provisional registration and supervised practice, and you enroll your internship ITP program, internship training program, and uh, you complete 1,824 internship hours. Uh, that's the standard hours. Uh, recently, we had some uh, reduction in hours, but uh, I would still quote the standard hours. Um, as uh, the other speakers mentioned, uh, this is the golden time for pharmacists, uh, overseas pharmacists to migrate to Australia. Uh, the demand is increasing in because of increasing uh, increased demand in services, and the top of uh, the line is immunization. Uh, and then uh, I would say the critical and acute shortage in both metropolitan and regional area in in past couple of years, but regional is always in high demand, and. Um, I have actually quickly made uh, two slides with the pharmacist eligibility um, in immigration categories, and uh, that that makes it convenient to understand. So these these categories are only for hospital and retail pharmacists, which comes under AP APC Australian Pharmacy um, Council. Um, I think community uh, industrial pharmacy Irfan Hashmi would cover that. Uh, so this is uh, I just took an image from. Um, Department of Immigration website, the list of visas. So retail pharmacists, you can look at that, like um, it's uh, it's covered in uh, most of categories 190. So these are different categories, skill nomination, training visa, regional sponsorship, temporary skill shortage, short-term stream. So all these uh, visa categories would be available for the person who would pass his caps in Islamabad. So you can finish your caps in Islamabad, you can uh, do your English exam in Islamabad, and after that, there are different uh, groups to uh, to reach out to look for your internship and further help. Uh, this is a hospital pharmacist list. So it's it's a pretty much similar list as the retail pharmacist list uh, of the visas. Um, so this is a bit of uh, more elaboration. Like forty percent after forty percent of um, internship, uh, you can be eligible for. Uh, exams and exam fees, seven and ten dollars. So I just try to uh, explain it a bit, but with the shortage of time, I'll just keep going quickly. Um, so uh, when you do internship, basically you 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 learn here local laws and ethics of Australia, and then you know they also check your calculation skills in pharmaceutical your pharmaceutical calculation skills expertise and they your medication management approach according to um, to the Australian standards and health promotions. So these are uh, the key categories uh, which would be uh, expected uh, from a student appearing in exam. Uh, so once you pass that, you can register with the uh, Pharmacy Board of Australia um, and then you have to do um, 40 CPD points per year, minimum 150 hours every year or for 50 hours every three years of practice to keep your registration alive. Um, areas of practice, these are the main areas. I'm sure there would be more now. Uh, hospital pharmacy, community pharmacy, GP practice pharmacies, HMR. This is a, this is a consultancy area, HMR, HMM, uh, RMMR. Uh, I think government has done a lot of funding in that RMMR recently. Industrial um, pharmacist uh, legislation and TGA. So these are the regulatory bodies. Uh, so this is a bit of um, employment outlook, but I would say this is um, the old um, graph 2018. So at, the, at this stage, I would say it would be definitely uh, peaked and heightened. Uh, so this is just the pharmacist earning, um, average earning uh, in all jobs versus pharmacist earning. So pharmacist is on a good end of, uh, it's, it's, it's a good profession in Australia. And um, again, um, type of industries in Australia, like retail, the community pharmacy would be in a high demand. And uh, it's just a bit of distribution of pharmacist number in different states. Um, age profile that actually tells us that uh, what age group is in a profession, um, education level uh, of the locals. And these are the references available for all um, APC and um, uh, Pharmacy Board of Australia, APRA. So these are the three, um, areas which have accessed. 
and um, so there are some recruitment agencies i'm sure if swan ashmi would uh, take them uh, further in talk about this like lok lokampur ravens um loved so many seek so they can be checked for uh, even intern positions and they 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 can be helpful to find a job um so take home messages um uh, i'll tell to all uh, pakistani pharmacists they receive a uh, good standard of pharmacy education in pakistan which is recognized in australia and for caps process uh we are very well versed in english language i would say and um, it's um, it's bit of effort and um, we can uh, definitely uh, work in australia and uh, pakistanis are hard working committed honest eager to learn like irfan hashmi is an example i am just one of his student and um, pakistan is enjoy good reputation recognized because of cricket as well so that's again uh, irfan hashmi's passion uh, so that's all uh, i tried my best to be within 5 minutes so um, if there would be any question at the end i'll be more than happy to answer thank you very much Uh, thank you, Vakas Sir, um, for explaining the process so comprehensively to our audience, uh, and especially those who would be interested in um, finding opportunities here in Australia. Uh, I would now like to invite our next speaker, Mr. John Kegney. He is the owner of a chain of pharmacies in Australia. For his remarks. Is that better? Thank you. I'd like to talk from the position of being an employer of uh, two Pakistani pharmacists. One's been here just two weeks. I think he's in the second week, and another's been here a couple of months. And I just want to talk about our experience and what I've found. Um, <clears throat> the the knowledge of these two gentlemen, uh, just in general conversation, that the the pharmaceutical knowledge is is very good they know the drugs they know what's going on so if you're comfortable your training is up to the standard the process of getting them here obviously took a little while but it is faster now for the second gentleman than it was for the first gentleman the department of immigration in australia is certainly um very keen to to move these along the agent we used was excellent and i was very lucky to have a senior trusted staff member that managed the whole process so it didn't take up much of my time or took take me away from practicing the experience has been really good from my perspective i'm in a rural and re or regional area which we reasonably remote actually tomorrow is australia day and that's the day i turned up in this town 42 years ago to start practicing and i haven't left so it must be okay and we've done very well and really enjoyed the nature of this town which is not only an australian town that will celebrate australia day tomorrow but it's very multicultural we have already a couple of pakistanis whose husbands have come here have worked for us and we've got a wide range of different nationalities have come to our organization so i have had experience with um international pharmacists and i must say the knowledge of these two pakistani gentlemen is just up there with the best so that's it's very heartening from my perspective their understanding of this that australia is a totally different culture maybe not quite as what they had expected but we didn't expect we didn't know quite what to expect either but they're fitting in fine we've had some good conversations about what their needs are around um um food and and other things we've been able to support and help them and we've been able to um identify those issues as well so cultural awareness is something that if you're considering coming to be prepared that it is a totally different culture but australia is very very multicultural and very accepting especially in our remote area we have about 60 different nationalities in wyala um and we cope with everybody we all get on well there's no problems and it's it's just a wonderful place 
as well as opportunities for women, and, and Veronica touched on that, we have a number of women pharmacists. Some work part-time looking after young children. I've got one who's just given us the great news that she's having a baby in, in um, six months' time, so that's a great thrill. She's worked with us for a long time. So that's that's a, just the journey we, we've had. So um, long-term, there's a great opportunity in rural areas to get a very broad range of experience as well. It's because there's less of us here, we're having to make more decisions at an earlier age and get more experience. So you don't have to wait for long to be thrust into the deep end and really enjoy the full scope, scope of practice. In, our, in a regional area, we have everything. You've got to be able to do everything, basically, from HMRs, RMMRs, right through to supporting the hospital. We do a lot of discharge with the hospitals here. So there's a lot of, as well as aged care facilities. So there's a lot, there's a broad experience. So I suppose to sum up, to come to a rural and remote area, you've got the ability. The English of the two gentlemen that we've got is, is very good and you've got the skill set. So it's something that I'm really grateful for Irfan in particular for putting me on, on this path. <laughs> and I just um, want to acknowledge the, the um, how do I say, the, the prospect of, of being a pharmacist in Australia. It's probably never been a better time. And I'm just a bit sad that I'm at the end of my career, not at the beginning of my career, because there's a lot of exciting things happening in the pharmacy industry. It's really a wonderful industry, a wonderful caring industry, especially in small communities like ours. We have a wonderful understanding and wonderful um, age with the community and we, we live and breathe together with our community and they're very reliant on us and it's just a very very satisfying career that i've experienced in a regional remote area um and i just would encourage people to take up the opportunities um obviously there's pharmacist shortages and um there's many groups that would be helpful to support you i know that being part of the terry white group myself Terry Wright Kemmark group, and you've heard from Brendan, he's he's top notch. He, he really knows what's going on. And Terry Wright Kemmark, I'm sure, will support you as well as some of the other groups. But it's um, there's great opportunities. So don't hold back. Think about the future and just dream that you know one day you might be here helping out our communities as well. I think that covers off everything that I wanted to say, but I just want to give you my personal experience. And it's been a very good one. So thank you very much to the Commissioner putting this on today and to Irfan for organising and the other presenters. It's been fascinating to listen to everybody. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. And thank you so much for your encouraging words for all those who have joined us today and sharing your positive experience with the pharmacists from Pakistan. Um, I would now like to invite our next speaker, Mr. Irfan Hashmi. He was awarded the South Australia's Pharmacist of the Year in 2009. Um, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much, uh, High Commissioner, uh, uh, Mr. Zahid, uh, and uh, thank you very much for all the panels uh, and uh, colleagues who uh, arrange uh, time to come on this forum. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, uh, get my screen share, if you please allow me to do that. It says uh, host disable uh, that screen sharing, if I can have that option on, please. I'd like to talk about uh, the regional pharmacy experience, especially. Okay, yep, that's good, thank you. Okay, being in this country from past 20 years, we most of our life work in region. And this slide actually a summary, which actually says about me and my wife, so we are both practicing pharmacist, uh, practicing in, uh, started career in Northern Territory and then started in Port Piri back in 2005. So 16 years we've been owner and uh, being regional is very rewarding. This is what I normally say to everyone that being in region is very rewarding. And uh, 
last year we received this multicultural governors award from government sa for our community engagement work and these are the pharmacies that we operate in regional sites especially in regional remote outback of south australia and regional victoria and so this is just a example that one can follow the pathway to come in region and come to this level if they want to achieve uh, the hard work okay so come to the scope and opportunities that are available in regional south australia there's a demand of uh, caps pass pharmacists in regional area not only because that we are shortage of pharmacists but we have more scope of work has increased since the covid came and we have we are providing a lot of new services in in our, in all community pharmacy practice so that's something which uh need to need to be need to be a challenge for those who look for coming to Australia and they want to increase their knowledge, especially uh, because as Veronica said, that different countries have different practices. I know that in Australia, we can vaccinate, we can provide sleep apnea service. Vokas is one of the champion pharmacists in this area. And uh, uh, we have number of champion pharmacists working in, in, in different areas uh, like pain management uh, and uh, uh, so something which is very, very unique for their own interest. So that's something which you can explore coming to Australia, which actually allow you to work in different scope of pharmacy practice. And especially when you come to region, as uh, uh, John just said, that we make decision quickly and we learn quickly. So that's something which is an edge that you come to region and you get that experience and, and that make you a prominent pharmacist and that makes your progress quicker towards the goal whichever goal you have you, either you want to be a pharmacy in charge or you want to be a pharmacy partner or you want to be a pharmacy entrepreneur so that's something you can plan very quickly if you come to region that's something which i would encourage to all regional pharmacists when they come lifestyle benefit again, again uh, australia is a great country especially sports is very uh thoroughly available in regional towns and in, in, in all sort of sports uh, because we are talking to Pakistani pharmacists most of us like cricket so cricket is one of the big culture in, in this country you can make a lot of friends it is a variety of uh, uh, there, there's a lot of friends that you can make just going into a cricket club and 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 competing with other club that make you prominent figure in the regional town if you come to region and, and that allow you to mix up with the culture. So cultural awareness is available more and acceptability is more for regional pharmacists as compared to any other places in Australia. And don't worry about that anything that you won't have internet, you won't have electricity, everything is available in regional, regional towns or regional cities. So there's no difference as if living in a suburb of a city or re living in a regional regional town. So I know that a lot of questions asked when I do webinars, they always ask that, oh, if I'm going to live in regional, is it safe? If I'm going to live in region, can I get a bus or like a transport service or these kind of things? Every service is available in regional town. So that's something you need to be very clear about that. Uh, so next, next thing is that uh, which when I spoke to Helen about this program, I mentioned to her that this opportunity, the great opportunity started recently by Western Australian government where the encouraging pharmacists coming to Australia through CAPS with no work experience. So that's something which I really want to audience to understand this. If they're coming out of the uni, fresh graduates, they can complete their CAPS exam within six months. And they have they have an option available now, thanks to the High Commissioner from both countries, that they make this possible. That Islamabad is a center now that allow pharmacists in Pakistan to take exam in March, July, or November. And if they come, they, if they plan that program, if they plan their actions, that they can they can complete this and they can be here within twelve months because some of the states allow now. With no experience, pharmacists can come. So this is something which is very important for fresh graduates, something which, which wasn't available before, which is just a new thing. And there's another pathway I want to talk about pharmacy technician. And the demand for pharmacy technician is also huge. And pharmacy technician is again in the list first time. I have never seen this in the demand list in my career in the last 20 years. So this is a great opportunity for those especially those candidates who are coming out of uni 
and they have worked in a pharmacy during their you know the uni uni days if they have worked as a pharmacy staff or pharmacy technician those students can qualify to come here on the basis of pharmacy technician through vitasis assessment if they have one or three year experience and a pharmacy degree no need to pass the caps exam and they can put their application to vitasis vitasis takes two weeks only only two weeks to assess their papers they get the paper assist they do the english exam put the application to state government for uh, state nomination. And there, some of the state nominations, I heard that they've been granted within a week time or within a day as well. Oh, yes. yes, very quick. Uh, at the moment, uh, state nominations, states are taking this very seriously. So this is a great opportunity for those. I know that the cost of CAPS is very high as in terms of rupee conversion to dollars. So that's something which I advise quite a few uh, candidates from 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 my webinar that this is an option but if someone can do caps go for that one that's the first thing which i would suggest another pathway is the industrial pharmacist which is again listed as a priority at the moment in the australian uh, immigration list as well as in the state immigration list as well state are giving state nominations as well so this is another pathway for those who have worked in the industry and they have minimum of one year experience they can put up the application to Vitasis. Again, Vitasis priority assessment is just two weeks, $1,400 cost to apply, and then state nomination, complete the English test, no caps, and they can apply for the visa. So that's something which I thought I'd just explain that thoroughly. What I have done so far in last one year, why this actually I started since last year when, when COVID hit, and we were short of pharmacy staff. So I just explored this area and I found that there are a number of pharmacists who want to come, but they don't know how to, how to approach employer. So I just started a small group of pharmacists. At the time I have 70 pharmacists, I was working with them. I just named that project as a, a workforce solution, pharmacy workforce solution. And in that project, what I've done that a network and for those who have passed the exam and I just connect them to the employers, which, which I know. John is one of the greatest examples, and there are many other examples. I know that I approach many, but we can't fit them all in today's webinar. Thank you, John, for coming in on board and, and explaining your expression. Uh, and visas have been granted very quickly. So I'm very proud to say that about roughly around 40 or more jobs has been like secured in this one year. And those candidates are now working mostly in Western Australia, someone went to Queensland, someone went to New South Wales, regional New South Wales. So this is what I have done, guiding them how to build their resume, how to uh, ready, make them ready for interviews. So this is what I do in my regular webinars at the moment, providing video uh, information for those who are just new for the system and also providing education. Also the cultural awareness is very important, which I feel that uh, I need to explain or we need to explain to Pakistani students that this is a very important part that they need to understand. When they're coming to new country, I know that we Pakistanis have a good English since from the school level to the university level, we, we use English as, as we all know, but the cultural awareness is very important. So this is what I'm doing in those webinars. Providing CAPS exam training is all free. Uh, expectation, job expectation. In those webinars, I normally explain to them what employer is looking from you, what kind of person they're looking for, from not only the, they're looking for the CV, but they're looking for a human being who can work with them, with the team, and, and can be beneficial for their for the customers or for their clients. So this is what I actually try to explain in my webinar. And, and also when, when someone goes through the next level, when they go for the interview, I actually prepare them for the interview as well. What and how to how to give those right answers in a way that, because cultural awareness is, there's a huge gap of culture. That's something which need to be filled for. We need to build a program. I know that uh, Pharmacy Gill has initiated a program for CAPS students, which can be handy for upgrading their knowledge of pharmacy. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there must be some cultural awareness uh, modules would be added in that program. So that will be very helpful for those who pass the exam and coming to Australia. They must go for attend this exam and the fee for that exam, they need to pay, but which will be subs, like will be merged in their uh, 
training program. So that's something they don't have to worry about it. And if someone wants to connect, I have these LinkedIn profile, which if you want to connect, I am happy to respond to any pharmacist, anywhere they're approaching me. And just a quick review for uh, what Wakas has just shown that retail pharmacies, he has already covered that, but I just want to show that pharmacy technician visas, uh, what kind of visa they can apply, which is 491 visa, which is very quick visa at the moment from, from those uh, experiences which I have learned from those who applied and got those visas. The 491 visa is the most priority visa if they're approaching or they're applying with pharmacy technician after doing the vitacis assessment. And same for industrial pharmacist, all these visa options are available, but 491 state nomination is one of the priority visa in federal government. They actually uh, taking these applications, approving them, and uh, and pharmacists can come to Australia to work in in their segment. But I just want to highlight one thing that industrial pharmacists, when they come here, they sometimes struggle to get into work, so they they need to go with a lot of like processes, they need to go with a lot of recruitment. But again, I advise them that they need to go with a CAPS exam to upgrade their skills, upgrade their pharmacy degree to a student degree. If they do it, then the things become easy. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for, for my side. Thank you very much for having me on this conference. Uh, thank you so much, Irfan Saab, uh, for telling us about the scope and opportunities for pharmacists in rural and regional Australia and especially opportunities for industrial pharmacists and pharmacy technicians. Um, I would now like to invite our next speaker, Ms. Sobia Hashmi. She's the director at the Terry White Kemmart Cumberland Park Pharmacy for her remarks. Thank you so much, uh, uh, the High Commissioner of Pakistan. Uh, Aslam alaikum and welcome to all uh, who are watching me from around the world, especially my um, fellow pharmacist in Pakistan. Um, it's a great opportunity to tell everyone that how um, pharmacists are performing um, in the forefront of um, Australian pharmacies and how we are able to contribute to this um, great nation of ours. Um, we, uh, my topic for today is uh, the um, integration of uh, uh, pharmacists into a community, um, and that involves um, a uh, right sort of a person uh, to uh, mingle in the community. So my background is uh, from region. So we, myself and Irfan, we, when we started our life in Australia, um, I know that it's a very daunting the decision for a lot of us, but um, I think it was not that difficult as I've uh, seen my um, fellow colleagues in other cities of Australia. Uh, we started our life in Adelaide um, and then um, I got the opportunity to work in Northern Territory for a year. Um, I did my training from there. Um, and then uh, myself and Irfan, we were getting this opportunity in Port Piri, which is a small town in South Australia. So um, if, if, uh, it, if you look at us, um, the, what we have achieved so far, I think uh, I will uh, definitely recommend, if you look at our lives, I will definitely recommend um, the newcomers, especially with children, or even if you have a young family to start their lives in region. I, I'm a huge supporter of regional pharmacies. And at the moment, there is the golden opportunity, as Vakas said, um, that um, this is uh, this the best time to come to Australia if you are looking forward to make a move. Now, myself and Irfan, we've been working with a lot of communities since uh, COVID happened. Um, you want the next one? So at the time of COVID, uh, when everyone was um, obviously um, in isolation, we had a, um, we thought about 
uh, of the different communities that were in isolation at that time, especially the multicultural communities. Obviously, the Australians have, um, they're a very lucky nation because they have total access to everything because of Medicare. But um, we looked at a lot of uh, communities who knew that they had private health and things, but they were not, there's a lot of things that were not fully covered on their uh, private health and um, especially the opportunity to move into the community and train, like tell them about different things that the pharmacies can offer. Um, so we got an uh, opportunity to do a flu clinics um, in some of the community organizations. We linked through uh, some multicultural organizations, uh, Indians, um, Argentinian. There's, there's a lot of them. And then for this program, we uh, translated our flies into 15 different languages. And that's how we connected to different communities. Um, at that time in South Australia, the Flu vaccination was not covered under the um, the government, the National Immunization Program. Um, we offered the free flu vaccinations at that time, and that gave us an opportunity to connect to different communities. So I, I found that um, there was a sort of uh, a connection that we had with the community. And here I would like to emphasize on the connection of the community. So. Whoever is coming to a new um, culture, new land, they need to understand this, that they, they, have, they, they have full understanding of how things work. So I have seen a lot of pharmacists who are still not um, registered. They're living in Australia, but still not registered. And they are not finding those links to link with the community. It could be anyone. It could be a friend. It could be even if you're not playing, if you're not interested in playing, it could be your son who's playing for a community club or um, you're linking through someone, through a friend. So um, my advice is to just link with the community and in whatever way you can. It's it's not, and to be able to understand, you need to be, you need to know that we are not, there's a lot of people who are mentally live in, uh, in, live in uh, men, physically in uh, Australia, but mentally in Pakistan. So when a lot of people come here, they think that they're still like, uh, in a different um, mental capacity, they don't. They don't. They don't have the ad, right attitude to mix in the community. So the more you mix with the community, the more you say um, you uh, understand the needs of that small town. So, like for example, in um, Port Piri and in all the uh, regions that we have the pharmacies, uh, we're a huge supporter of the. Um, the community, the bowling club, the um, uh, cricket um, clubs. There's a few cricket clubs, um, obviously because of Irfan's interest in cricket. So um, they, they can be a lot more than that. So um, uh, I just want to clarify this thing that um, regional towns are really great to make a start if you're looking forward to uh, start a new life in Australia. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Hashmi, for your briefing. Now I would like to invite the High Commissioner for his concluding remarks. Indeed. Thank you, Aisha. I wish to thank everyone for joining us here at this webinar. I am particularly grateful to all the panelists and uh, I am grateful to Vakas. I am grateful to Irfan for being such a valuable partner in our effort. Uh, we spoke about the Pakistani community. Pakistani community here in Australia has grown recently both in numbers as well as in influence. We have over 100,000 strong Pakistani diaspora here. We have 15,000 plus Pakistani students enrolled in various universities. And Pakistani community is known to be a community of professionals. It is known to be a community of high achievers and it is known to be a community that contributes to the Australian society, whether uh, it is a COVID-19 uh, problem or bushfire here in Australia, our community is always at the forefront of uh, helping their other fellows here in the Australian society. We also spoke about uh, the Pakistani women here in the pharmaceutical sector. You've just heard Sobia and then we have Neelam uh, Vakas, Ashraf's wife, they are both extremely talented pharmacists, but also contributed 
significantly during the COVID-19. I am particularly myself witness to what Neelam did during COVID-19. So we are really proud of the achievement of our community here in uh, Australia. You just heard about the potential of pharmaceutical sector here in uh, Australia. We uh, heard that in Australia, they have over 6,000 pharmacies, over 70,000 people employed, and then including 33,000 registered pharmacists. We also heard that there is currently a shortage of more than 3,500 pharmacists. And we also heard uh, the opinion of the employers of Pakistani pharmacists, how good they are, their communication skills and their professional knowledge. But this is not the feedback that we have received today. This is generally the feedback that I have received uh, uh, from all corners here in the Australian society. I have met more than 25 presidents and vice chancellors of Australian universities. And from, all, from almost everyone, we heard that Pakistani students are doing much better than the average students here in Australia. We are really proud of the achievement of Pakistani community here in uh, Australia. We also heard about the opportunities and then more importantly, how to avail those opportunities here. We have the CAPS examination center in Pakistan. We have the English language proficiency, proficiency tests available in uh, Pakistan. So I think there is this whole infrastructure of sport that Pakistani pharmacists have available. Taking opportunity of uh, today's event, I would request both Irfan and Vakas if they can think in terms of sponsoring at least one scholarship per year covering the cost of uh, CAPS examination fee for the most deserving Pakistani pharmacists, but it's up to uh, them. We would love uh, to work with them if we can uh, uh, come up with something like that, at least one scholarship for the most deserving and talented Pakistani uh, pharmacists. So uh, opportunities. And then I would also request both uh, Vakas and Irfan, if we have their permission, we would love to share their presentation through our website and then also through our uh, other social media platform, if we can share their presentations with those who can benefit from, from, from this. I think this will be a great help for the aspiring uh, pharmacists who uh, are intending to begin a career as a pharmacist here in uh, Australia. But again, thank you so very much for, to, to everyone for being part of our effort. This was one of the first of a series of webinars that we'll be hosting as part of uh, the Opportunities Conference. Our next webinar would be on the engineering sector. And the third one would be on the IT uh, sector. And then we'll continue with this effort, sharing information with the Pakistani youth about the opportunities available for Pakistani citizens here in Australia. But last but not the least, Australia, it's a wonderful country. It's a truly multicultural society. I must say the transition of Australia from white Australia to a true melting pot of different ethnicities, cultures, and religions, it's been but remarkable. So thank you very much again. Uh, so thank you very much. This brings us to the conclusion of today's webinar. All those who have joined us today, please follow us on our social media accounts for the details of the next session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.